Security, Orlando Cobra speaking. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Sorry to hear about that. I'll look into it immediately. Thank you for calling. Going up to the Frost Suite. Frost. This is Frost. It's Mr. Kobo with security. But I have to turn that down. Uh, Orlando Cobo. I uh, found the bodies and called it in. Uh, that's good, Mr. Cobo. We have a few questions for you, okay. uh, if you don't mind. Uh, officer, look, their uh, forensic team will be coming up with some other homicide detectives. You can let them in, but nobody else in or out. Sure. Why did you come up to the room? Oh, I, I got a call from one of the neighbors. Uh, the Frost, they were playing the radio out real loud. Well, I'm sorry I turned it off. Maybe, the, maybe I should this, That's okay. At least you told us. Yeah, if you don't mind waiting for a while, we'll have a few more questions. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> First thing we gotta find out is if the cats belong to the victims or if the killers brought them here. Killers plural? No sign of a struggle. If it's one guy, he must be one incredibly intimidating character. Maybe these guys ran over his cat. Maybe he's trying to get back at him. Can we get a shot of this before I move it, please? What do we have? This kind of violence, you think there'd be more of a mess. Sarge, I spoke with the security guard. I got the name and room number of the guy who phoned in the complaint. Want me to talk to him? Yeah, everybody else on this floor, for that matter. Try to pinpoint exactly when the radio went on. Got it. Uh, Ruby. Question, what do you make of this? Hmm. Uh, hmm. Looks better than I can afford on my salary, so... <laughs> I'd say it's pretty nice. I guess we're not dealing with a robbery, huh? Well, credit cards here, but no cash. At least nothing traceable. And the prints are wiped, I'll bet. I don't know. Uh, Verona, is this, uh... That section is clean. Wish me luck. Wouldn't it be nice if somebody saw something? All right. Travelers checks. Uh -huh. All right. See how many are cash, to whom, for what, when, et cetera, et cetera. The whole deal. So I wasn't gouged. Burned. I'll know more once I get him down to the morgue. But from the look of it, that is not a post-mortem wound. They burned his eye out while he was still alive? Yeah. Councilman, would you Over here. As I was saying to the council, let's fix the blame where it belongs, ladies and gentlemen. We need leadership in the police department capable about taking this madman, or we're going to be living in a ghost town. In my day on the force, this would not be happening. Any questions? Really, Richie, come. Chief. Good morning, sir. Good to see you. Surprise. What the hell are you doing about the Frost murders? Well, it's a. Uh... Very difficult case, sir. Don't tell me it's a difficult case, Leo. When I'm leaned on, I lean. Sir, we're doing everything we can. Yeah, well, that isn't the answer, then, is it? Well, we both know the reality, Chief. Sometimes there just aren't enough facts to go. Maybe you've got the wrong people on it. I've got my best officers on it, sir. Oh? Well, Councilman Ernst is out looking for blood. When he finds it, it's not gonna be mine. With all due respect, Chief, one of our lead detectives on the case is his daughter. Well, if you 
you think that helps you, Leo? I think again. And off the record. I would say you would damn well better watch your back. I actually think you do. You dad. Well, exactly my thoughts. Yo. I got a kite in the car if you want to go to the beach. And I know a guy to get us uh, tickets to the ball game. What's up to you? Whatever you want to do. Kite sounds nice. Hey. You stay in the weekend, are you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. the matter if I tell you we'll just have a fight oh yeah right yeah I'm the one that walked out on him what do you want me to do just act like everything's fine it is what it is well we're gonna have a good time love you see you Sunday come on pal you said I love you mommy well yeah me too Yeah, you did it higher, but pull the line tighter. Ah, there you go. That's it. Now you got it. You got it. Just keep the line tight. Come back this way. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. Or come down. Pull it tight. Ah, there you go. What if it's not windy? Well, that's why one of us has to run with a kite and make our own wind. Really? Yeah, you know, it's like when you ride your bicycle, you you feel the air rush past you. Well, that passing air is wind, I guess. Mm. What if you're riding a bicycle and it's windy? Jason. <laughs> I don't know. It's like asking what is the color of the wind? Mm. Are you ever coming home? Thank you. Is it because I'm too young and I wouldn't understand? Ah, oh, Jason, there's a lot of things in life I don't understand. I thought dads were supposed to know everything. Mm, not even close. <clears throat> ah. Ainsley. Well, I'm tied up, kind of personal. Uh, can somebody else cover it? Well, all right, all right, I'm on my way. Uh, look, that's uh, work. Yeah, I know. Jason. 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 Karen, would you explain to him? I know, you're sorry. I'll see that he gets the message. Clear this out now. Yeah, go. Gibson, get these people back. OK. 
okay? What do you got? The man's feet were tied to the space heater. Burned them to a crisp before it blew out. Okay, I'm cutting T. Three inches down the center. This isn't just murder, boys and girls. This was torture. Pure and simple. This guy was alive when all of this was done to him. Well, I guess we're not in such a hurry anymore. How's that? I'm betting we got all the time in the world. It's just the beginning, Sarge. Now, I don't want to hear that everything has already been checked out because obviously it hasn't. You're looking at the wrong things. You're looking in the wrong places, and some of you are just flat not looking. I want each and every one of you to go back over every detail, over every forensic report, every note, until you find something that you didn't see before. Now, I'm not going to use the word urgent, people. I'm using the word emergency. We are in a burning building, people. Now get us out of it before we're all toast. Now we don't know. The killer knew they had cash. Could be he just got lucky. In which case he killed him because all it. What do you make of that? Smells like a possible. Hey, buddy, is there a cigarette? Just take the pack, just get out of here. Give me the keys. Put that hand on a wheel. Drop the gun. You drop yours. You got three seconds. Don't do it. Three seconds! One! Not gonna do you any good, I got your car keys. Two! Of course it was dangerous, but so was doing nothing. In another second, his hostage would have been dead, and that's what I had to prevent. Of course, caution is a good thing, but sometimes caution can get people killed. I really don't think recriminations are going to... Not recrimination. Responsibility. Well, we're both responsible here, Karen. I didn't move out. All right. I moved out. Does that make me responsible for everything? Oh, I've got to win you back? Is that what you're saying? No, I didn't say that at all. Did I say anything like that? Don't talk to me. Talk to her. <sighs> all right. You're right. We're both responsible, but I would like a marriage that doesn't happen only in this room. So do I, Karen. But you're not willing to leave your girlfriend, are you? She has nothing to do with it because I had already moved out. Malcolm, you used to be a priest. Why couldn't you go back to living like a priest until we could work things out? Examiner? You're the first to respond, ma'am. The guy painting the house saw the bodies. There was a radio on. He called 911. Couldn't hear a thing, so we turned it off. Where? Follow me. This is 8-2. I'm at the Newton Street site. Confirmed double homicide. I need an ID unit and a medical examiner here immediately. The lieutenant is doing his job. Doing his job. 
bodies are piling up like cordwood. It's not multiple killers, it's one. One killer, we're working on it. A psychotic. And your lieutenant doesn't seem capable of thinking I'm psychotic. That's ridiculous. You're just looking for an issue. I found it. This is the kind of police work this city needs. Let's see what we've got. Detective Ernst has information on the latest homicides. A couple in their 60s, Hispanic, name of Urbina. The bodies were in the living room, tied, seated, just like the other ones. Loud rock music was playing. They were cut. Sandra, do you have anything on that? I do. There were very deep serrations on both the victims. Now, I did bone sections, and all the markings seem to match the knife that was used in the other homicides. OK. Uh, as I said, the victims were seated. There was a punch bowl, apparently from the house, filled with urine and human feces. They were found by the local. Wait a minute. Hmm. So, um, anybody got a Bible? Nope. Not me. Yeah, I got one in my desk. Would you get it, please? Yeah, of course. Just <clears throat> about. Thanks. <clears throat> and at her hand, a golden cup filled with abominations and filthiness. Hmm. What's that? It's the book of Revelations, isn't it? Exactly, the book of Revelations. I think we need to see how this pertains to all the other cases. The Frost, mm. four dead cats. That's right. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four beasts. All right. Frost's eyes were burned. Chapter 1, verse 14. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And Heinefeld's feet were burned. Same chapter, next verse. And his feet were like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. That leaves the radio. I was in the spirit of the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice. Yeah. Mm. The book of Revelation, the last judgment. This is the business our killer's in. Cynthia? You're supposed to knock first, Daddy. And you're supposed to keep the door locked. I can take care of myself. That's hardly the point. Should I set another place? No. Your mother's expecting me. I just wanted to tell you to expect a call from Chief Kittledge. Councilman? He's going to be giving you a commendation for your superior work in that hostage situation. Because you told him to? The police chief does not take orders from me. But you did tell him to. Nice seeing you again, Sergeant. I don't want some phony commendation. Please give my thanks to the chief anyway. A commendation like this will look very good for your career. I'm sure when you have a chance to think it over, you'll see that. special visitor with us here today. Councilman Ernst has stopped by to pay his respect. Well, before we begin, would you like to say some words, uh, Councilman? We still have six brutal unsolved murders on our hands and absolutely nothing to tell the public. Excuse me, sir. There are eight. Detective? Uh, yes. I just got off the phone with Monroe County, and uh, apparently they had a similar homicide about two months before the first one here. One male and female tied in chairs. Let me get this straight. Monroe County had a similar homicide prior to the first one here? Yes, sir. And they're calling now because they read our bulletins? Yes, sir. But they didn't uh, send out a bulletin 
when their homicide occurred? Well, that's not clear, sir. Apparently... Yes or no? They sent out a bulletin or they didn't? They did. Actually, I'm not sure that it would have made that much of a difference. If you people had recognized from the beginning that they were dealing with a serial killer, perhaps four more people wouldn't have had to die. And I think the Homicide Bureau deserves leadership that understands that. The rest will be easy. Well, stop to question the rest, whatever. Religious zealots, religious fanatics, uh, dangerous knife wielding, any combination of the three. Well, Calhoun, Giannis, Robbins. What we got are four names. Not much on any of them, but one way or another, they each came in contact with the police in the last two years. Hi, uh, Eden, 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 Robbins, whatever, known as the Avenger. He panhandles on street corners in the better parts of town. He becomes abusive when he doesn't get what he wants. I don't mean to impose, but but all things on heaven and earth belong to God. You're stealing from God because what is God is mine. He spouts rhetoric from the Bible. From the book of Revelation? I don't know. It doesn't say here. Apparently pulled a knife, didn't use it. Assault, but not battery. That brings us to our next suspect. Elroy Doyle, a name that does roll off the tongue. Truck driver by trade, apparently he's pretty much a loner, carries a Bible. He's lost more than one job by getting into fights with other drivers. Police responded when he pulled the knife, but the man he attacked didn't want to press charges. Next, Carlos Quinones. Uh, the man appears to be a pimp. He claims to be a deeply religious man. Now, there's a dichotomy for you. <laughs> nice moves, baby. And oh, surprise, surprise, he's cut up more than one of his girls. He served time for pandering, drug peddling, assault. He squares his occupation as police by referring to the girls that work for him as the whores of Babylon. It sounds like a real jewel, son. And last but not least, James Calhoun, AKA Little Jesus, Jesus Picanio in some neighborhoods. Reports say he's extremely unstable, no kidding. He was remanded for psychiatric evaluation. But, oh, guess what? The public defender sprung him. He's had violent episodes, but never served time other than in psychiatric wards. All right. Well, I want you to all get out there, nose around as much as you can. Tail him, but don't get made. You really think one of these guys is the perpetrator? It's possible. Wow, well, it's a long shot. Well, long shot's the only shot we got. Heaven is waiting, pretty lady. I'll share a secret of the Lord with you. You lend a hand and the gates will open. That's him. Now, because Jesus personally asked you to feed the hungry. Now, if you call yourself a good Christian, or, or go to hell, lady, judgment is swift. Hey! You want to baptize yourself in the blood of the Sudden mood changes, wouldn't you say? Right I'm talking to you. Hey. That, is that, is that chicken? That's chicken. Here, tick, tick, tick. Cover me. Oh, look. It's a tomato. Oh, that's a good tomato. We should meet off the sidewalk. You're right. Other people's feet. You know, you never know. Now, perhaps if you could see your way. Oh, you don't have any money? I got all the money in the world, lady. I just don't like to spend it on, uh... You know, bread, you know? Now, perhaps, if you could see sure, your sure, way. Sure, 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 sure. you go. One buck. Kingdom of heaven, lady. What, do you think you're gonna get into the kingdom of heaven for a buck? It's practically change, lady. That's what this practically is. Practically. You trifle with the Lord. I wish we could talk. I really do but I don't have the time. Some other time. Let's get the car. You'll see us on foot, yeah? Let's stop 
has to go out today. What do you got? You sure you want to make another run? Yeah, yeah, sure. Back to back, Jesus. I... Sorry, name of the Lord. I just don't know how you do it. Take number four, it's all gassed up, ready to go. Elroy, what the hell's the matter with you? What are you talking about? You're gonna come back here and clean up that mess. Mr. Daly, I'm a truck driver, okay? I don't clean the trucks. Now, I've got another run, so don't tell me what to do. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. I'm warning you. Where is he? Over there. Tell the mayor I'll call him tomorrow and give him an update on the case. I've got the whole department working on this. I've got people working overtime. Chief? That'll be all for now. Thomas, thank you. You know, it's not often I get out of the office these days. I've always enjoyed this spot. Fresh air, cool breeze. Reminds a man that he's alive. Sir, why am I here? Direct and to the point. That's a good quality. Now, thank you for coming, Detective Ernst. Have a seat. Or perhaps I should say, uh, Lieutenant Ernst. Excuse me, sir? As a result of your heroism in an extremely dangerous situation. With all due respect, sir, the perpetrator's gun was not pointed at me. Please, have a seat. My point is <clears throat> that it was your decisive action under extremely difficult circumstances that reflects well on the competence of the whole department. It's my father, you mean. Of course, I spoke with Councilman Ernst, if that's what you mean. And it seemed to both of us that in light of all the negative attention the department's been getting... That negative attention, sir, is largely my father's doing. Councilman Ernst has been calling attention to a very unfortunate set of circumstances. With all due respect, sir, they're homicides, not circumstance. With all due respect, Lieutenant, the Homicide Bureau isn't the appropriate place for our most heroic officer. So as a lieutenant, you will assume command of the Sex Crimes Unit. Miss Cynthia. Hi, Theo. Theo, who is it? Hello, Mother. Oh, Cynthia. Oh, how nice. This is unexpected. Well, I'm sure Daddy's expecting me. I stopped by his office. They said he's working at home. Well, yes, he's here, but I, he didn't say anything about him stopping You're right. by. I was more or less expecting you. I take it you've spoken with Farrell. How dare you interfere with my life like that? I'm sorry you feel that way about it. But an oversight of the police has always set me on my... You're not police chief anymore, Daddy. Why don't we go into my study? We can talk. That's all right. I'm not staying. And I don't want your promotion. I hope you change your mind and stay. This has got to be the strangest reaction to a promotion in the history of the department. I'm sure you made lieutenant without anyone pulling strings for you. Don't kid yourself, Cynthia. 
Anyone who amounts to anything in this world has benefited somewhere along the line from influential friends. Daddy, there couldn't be a worse time than this. You know that. I'm working a very important case. Of course I know that. Now, you listen to me. The Homicide Bureau is falling on its face in public. And anyone connected with that case is going to find his career in a shambles. What are you running for, mayor? Perhaps the Senate. I really haven't made it. Fine. A... Let me know what you decide. I trust I'll get your vote. Of course. Isn't that what family's for? I wouldn't turn down that promotion if I were you. You'll be transferred out of homicide in any case. And I suggest you break off your affair with Sergeant Ainsley. That is none of your concern. Break it off. Or what, you'll ruin my career? You'd never do that because that's all you care about. That's all I mean to you, my precious career following your illustrious footsteps. You're right, of course. I wouldn't do anything to jeopardize your career. But I can destroy his. some quality time with his father while he was asleep. Why is it so hard for you to understand? Don't tell me I don't understand. I do understand. Right. I just got the wrong priorities. I don't know, Malcolm. What are your priorities? Right now? man wandering through this city who's killed eight people, four middle-aged or elderly couples. I read the newspapers. I watch the news. Well, I'm sorry, Kay, but that is a reality. No. Jason spelling me tonight was reality. Two of us sitting out in the backyard eating dinner. When it's so dark, we can't even see our plates. That used to be reality, too. Yeah. That were so. Why can't it be, Malcolm? Those other things don't have to be part of our lives. Let's say you're driving. You see a little kid in the street lying next to their bicycle. Do you stop to help him? Or do you just keep driving because you might be late for Jason Spelling Bee? It's not the same thing, Malcolm. But they're there, Karen. Visual on Doyle's mother. I'm gonna stick with her. Copy that. Pardon me, ma'am. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you, but I normally don't do the laundry, and, and the missus is a little under the weather. Could you please just help yeah. tell me where I might find some fabric softener? There's machines over there. Everything you need. 
So there are. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just hadn't counted on the kindness of others. Well, that's our duty as Christians. Oh, I am so glad you said that. May I, may I repay you with my kindness, ma'am? No, you don't need to. I just can't keep calling you ma'am. Oh, uh, uh, Beatrice. Beatrice Doyle. That's a fine Irish name. Actually, it's English with an I, D-O-I-L. Arthur Addison. At your service, Mrs. Doyle. <laughs> if I may, I pardon my impertinence, but uh, you're not doing yourself any benefits here with this product that you're consuming. Doesn't matter. Oh, yes, it does. I wouldn't even be bringing it up if I wasn't going through it with the missus. Is it a sickness unto death? Pardon? Your wife's illness that she suffers, is it a sickness unto death? Oh, God, I hope not. No, 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 no. You, you cannot call upon the Lord like that for the bodily health. It, it makes no difference. But I do. It makes a difference to me. The judgment is coming, Mr. Addison. Amen to that. Our bodies are our temples for as long as we have them with us, but how long will that be? I don't know. How long? Not long, not long at all, Mr. Addison, for he is coming with the clouds, and all eyes shall see him. And in his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he put his right hand upon me and said, Be not afraid, for I am the way, I am the first, I am the last, and I am the living one. I alone possess the keys of the grave and of death. Oh, that, that was beautiful, Mrs. Doyle. That was just beautiful. I said to my son, I said, Elroy, measure your days. This world is sick with sin and abomination. Pray for her. I thought you just said No, no not for her body. Pray for her soul. Please, Mr. Addison. Please. Lord, consume in your wrath the body of your handmaiden, Addison. Rosalie. Your handmaiden, Rosalie Addison, but deliver her soul unto thee. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And yea, though I walk through the valley of death, I shall fear no evil. Check it out, okay? We saw you go in there with him. You'll be all right. This dude must be hiding under a rock. Well, hang in there, Hank. Maybe he'll find you. Ha ha, very funny. Next time I'm gonna wait in the car and you come out here. Yeah, right. What's going on? I think it was just someone walking toward me, but now I don't see him. Oh, 
take a look. Alright. Silent. If you give up that right, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Rodriguez, is this right? We're not putting out a warrant for Quinones? The girl got cut doesn't want to file a complaint. She says she was jumped by an unknown assailant. Well, what about the knife cut? Can't Dr. Sanchez do anything about that? If he cut the bone, which he didn't, and if she were dead so I could take out that bone, which she isn't. All right, all right, so we can make anything stick. But we can bring him in. Yeah, well, Sergeant Ainsley says that he'd rather not. Well, it's not like you'd be giving anything away. The guy already knows you were there. He probably thinks we're vice. Sorry, she just would rather not let him know that homicide's taking a look at him. Where's Ainsley? He's in the coffee room talking with Ernst. She's, uh... She's not in the squad anymore, is she? She's transferred out. Lieutenant? I miss working homicide. You do? With you. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you should have turned the job down then. Oh, I couldn't. You don't know my father. Well, I don't know what you're complaining about. Uh, it's a promotion. If you don't want it, don't take it. Right. Good advice coming from a was a priest, was a married man. Hold on. I do accept the consequences for every decision I ever made. I suppose I'm one of those consequences, right? No, I didn't say that. I'm sorry. I just feel like my life is being run on remote control and I don't have the clicker. He wants me to stop seeing you. Sarge! We had to bring Calhoun in. He jumped Brewmaster in the park and pulled a knife on him. We got him down in interrogation. Okay. Is this a suspect? Just someone we're watching. Excuse me. So this is little Jesus, huh? What do you think? I don't know. Just someone he's watching. James, this is Detective Ainsley. on a police officer. You're gonna have to help us out a little if you want us to help you. What'd you mean when you said the Lord provides for you? How does he provide? Does he provide you with money? Food? Listen to me, James. You don't have to talk to us. That is your right. But if you don't want to talk to us, you have to at least tell us that. Is that what you want, James? James is dead! Jesus, is that right? I am the 
first and the last and the living one, and I possess the keys of the grave and of death. Book one. It's supposed to be a passion with our killer. This guy never even blinked. Mr. Calhoun has no criminal record. He spent the past two days at a psychiatric facility. Your Honor has the report. Your Honor, it wasn't two days. He was arrested Saturday night. This is Monday morning. The number of hours is not the issue, Mr. Knowles. Surely the state attorney should know that. He assaulted a police officer, Your Honor. Who didn't identify himself. Uh, excuse me, Your Honor. I'm Sergeant Malcolm Ainsley. Might I approach the bench? Yes. <clears throat> uh, Your Honor, I'm uh, with the Homicide Division. Perhaps you are aware of the number of gruesome murders in the city of late. And we are convinced that they are of a serial nature. What does this have to do with Mr. Calhoun? We have a short list of suspects and um, an application for a search warrant. Does your client even have a residence? Yes, Your Honor, he does. Uh, Your Honor, uh, um, the Homicide Bureau would appreciate if Mr. Calhoun was held in custody at least until the warrant was executed. Precisely what is it that you're looking for? Uh, personal items and property of the victims of the homicides and most especially a knife or knives used in the murders. Wasn't a knife used in the assault that your client is charged with? Yes, Your Honor, the police have it. Sergeant? It's not the knife that was used in the homicides, but we strongly believe that he used one knife for murder and had another one for self-protection on the streets. So you want me to approve a warrant that, as far as I can tell, is solely and entirely based on Mr. Calhoun's religious preference? Yes, ma'am. Application denied, Sergeant. You want to give us a clue? Damn judge cut him loose. Guy pulls a knife on me, and she cuts him loose anyway. Send him home, OR. The system sucks. I didn't identify myself. I'm working undercover, but I didn't identify myself. That's the only double-bladed I got. What are you saying? You had more, but you sold them all? I'm not saying that, no. The original Bowie knife wasn't double-bladed, you know. I didn't know that. All I need to know Jim is... Bowie went to a knife maker named James Black. Bowie gave him his specifications. But Black made him two knives. One was exactly like Bowie described. The other was double-bladed like these. Yeah, thank you for the history lesson, but all I need to know is if you sold it. By all rights, it should be called the Black Knife, not the Bowie Knife. Is that a yes or is that a no? Don't sell anything like that this time of the year. It's not the hunting season for months. It is for the guy we're looking for. Thanks. Here he comes. Visiting someone? Chicken. Chicken sandwich. I'm sorry? One buck. 
don't eat off the sidewalk. Hmm? God has a plan for me, lady. One crummy dollar? It's practically change. You're laughing at God's plan. No, I'm not. I would never do that. You're following me. I'm not. No, you're following me. It says it right in here. The Lord watches over me, but the devil has the power to assume a pleasing form. I'm not the devil, and I'm not following you. Good morning, Eden. How are you feeling? I'm fine, Doc. Come on, we're ready for you. Why do you do this to me? I buy you everything. Huh? Listen, I'm gonna tell you for the last time. You work for me. Uh! Hey, stop hitting her. What? You stay out of this, woman. Ah! Ah, okay, okay, enough. 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 Ah, okay, okay. Go on, you don't need this guy. Sure she does. Right? Huh, sweetie pie? Huh? <laughs> See? Everything's okay, lady. Look, no problem. Huh? <laughs> hey, you got some good moves to go with that good body. <laughs> hey! What? You wanna make some easy money? Shots fired! Shots fired! shoot him. He followed me into my house. I didn't know what he was going to do. All right. I did what I had to. Stop right there. Let me have that. I'm going to have to ask you some questions. Would you call it in? Dispatch, this is 1-4. Roger, 1-4, go ahead. Got a situation here. It's a very serious matter. You don't have to answer any questions if you don't want. You can consult with a lawyer if you'd like. Oh, no. I don't need a lawyer. Fine. I'll start with your name. Wanda 
fairly. Now, in your own words, Wanda, just tell me what happened. So, I know he's in back of me. I run in, and he's got this knife. So you shot him? See, what happened was I started to run, and he caught me. So I kind of gave him, like, a little chop. Chop? Like a... And then I kicked him in the groin area. That's pretty impressive. Six days a week. Better be worth something. And then he was on his knees, moaning, and that's how come I was able to get the gun. And at that point, he still had the knife. Actually, he dropped it when I kicked him. Okay. I want you to listen to me and do exactly what I tell you. Okay, in another second, I'm gonna ask you again if you want to talk to a lawyer. You're gonna tell me that you do. Later on, when you call the lawyer, you're not gonna tell him we had this conversation, okay? Okay. Now, I'm gonna have to ask you a few questions, Miss Fairley. You don't have to ask her if you don't want to. You have the right to consult with a lawyer. Yeah, okay. Okay, what? Yes, I'd like to consult with an attorney. Okay. One other question, off the record. We heard a shot, and then nothing. And then two more shots. What were the other two shots about? He wasn't dead yet. I'm going to be right in here, okay? It's just... I'm so worried. It's a friend of mine. He used to be my boyfriend. And he's been down on his luck lately. He's living on the street. And I kind of thought... Oh, this is awful. I can't believe I'm telling this to myself. That's all right. Really? I followed him and came here. What's your friend's name? Eden. Eden Robbins. And I'm afraid he's got something. Maybe I have it, too. Do you know what floor this is? It's communicable diseases. That's downstairs. This is oncology. You mean like cancer? But he's gonna be all right, isn't he? Oh, my God, how long has he known? Let me get someone to talk to you, okay? Okay, okay. Thanks. Cancer. Well, it's certainly going to have to be looked into. A person can't use deadly force just because they feel like it. You gotta be kidding. Hank, you're not supposed to shoot people who don't present a danger. What are you talking about? That guy knifed, I don't know how many women. Whatever threat he presented was pretty well passed when she opened fire. Give me a break. Can you answer me one question? What does the jury know? They know that there's this 28-year-old girl that had the guts to stand up this pimp with an eight-foot-long record of violence who was beating one of the girls who worked the street for him. They know the pimp followed her home, busted down the door, and attacked her. Look, maybe they won't convict her, but the point is... What? That there's some sort of public uh, relations advantage gained here by us looking like asses? All right. All right, all right, all right. Just put off the table, Brewmaster. Okay, the police chief has called twice already today. He wants to know if the deceased is our murderer. We didn't find a single thing in his apartment. Yeah, and the knife he was using is in a match not even close. The other homicides don't seem like this guy's style. When he had a style. And when he had a style. Well, gee, that's very disappointing. I mean, it's always nice when we can hang our unsolved homicides on a dead man. Well, I guess that takes care of new business. How about old business? Can anybody tell me what, if anything, we have? Eden Robbins has got cancer. Don't know what kind, but he goes to the hospital for treatment. If Elroy Doyle is crazy, then uh, his mother is as big a wacko as he is. The end of the world is coming. Total destruction. Calhoun's vanished. Lying low is what I heard. Robbins found out about the cancer about 
two and a half months ago, which is just about when the killing started. And to quote Doyle's mom, uh, out of his mouth went a sharp, two-edged sword. Now, I looked that up myself. That's Revelations 116. Uh, the cancer gives Robin one hell of a reason for taking everybody with him, so. I told her my wife was sick. Wife? <laughs> you yeah. gotta be kidding. No. <laughs> we prayed for her soul right there. <laughs> on the floor of the laundromat. She fell for that, did she? Yeah. She's... Talk to Karen, Malcolm. You keep bringing up my relationship. But what exactly are you prepared to do? If right now I said that's all over, I have not heard one word from you about any commitments on your part. Don't pin this on me, Malcolm. You took your vows as a priest, a vow to God, and you broke it. I broke my vows for you. You broke your vows to me. How many times do I have to tell you there were no other women when I moved out? But you moved out. That's not exactly commitment. All right, come on, both of you. Let's sit down and talk. You too, Malcolm. I don't feel like sitting down and talking. You want to know why? A couple of days ago, I saw a 15-year-old girl cut so badly she required four pints of blood. But she won't even identify the man who did it because she's scared you to see, death. You see, that's what I've talked about a hundred times. She's got a point, Malcolm. That's a very heavy burden to lay on a marriage. You can't bring troubles like that home with you. <sighs> Where else are you going to bring your troubles? Everybody's trouble. That's why we need each other so desperately. I uh, just wanted to say, I don't know what I wanted to say. <laughs> well, that's a start anyway. Yeah. That was, that was good in there. I never thought of you as needy. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean Don't that. apologize. It's good. You always seem so self-sufficient. Try to be. Maybe you shouldn't. That's a nice explanation. Thank you. Well, what do you want me to say? Something would have been good. Anything would have been good. Does this have anything to do with your little session at the marriage counselors with Karen? You never did finish telling me about your father's ultimatum. I, I told you what he said. What part did I leave out? What you were planning on doing. Malcolm, are you looking for an excuse? Is that what this is? Not that I know of. If you're going back to your wife, don't you dare try to use what my father said. No, I'm not using it. I'm just asking you, that's all. Why? Why do you have to know? Because when he told you to transfer departments, you transfer it. He tells you to end it with me. I have to assume that you will.
Chief, time to could you please comment? Do you think this is a terrible tragedy? A tragedy for the city, which has lost one of its most beloved leaders. A tragedy for the police department, which has lost one of its most respected former chiefs. And above all, a tragedy for the family. What does this earned to kill too? As you can see, I have just arrived. I have no information for you. Our press liaison will keep you informed. Thank you very much. We just heard from Chief of Police Farrell Kevin. Really? They're in there, Chief. Signed door. Butler was out for the evening, came home, found the bodies, and phoned it in. John, over here. Can you get a picture of this? Okay, there seems to be a two and a half inch to three hey. inch hey. length. Hey, right here, Bastard by now. We'll catch him. We will. We will. Sanchez. His ears were cut off. He that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the assemblies. Thomas. He had a scotch last thing every night in his study. If Theo had the night off, they must have been alone. Why don't we go somewhere else and talk? Uh, Mommy always went to bed first at night. I don't know why she would have been down here. Unless he... Unless, unless he tied Daddy up first. He must have tied Daddy up first, and then he went up and got her. Uh, there are no signs of a struggle upstairs. Scuff marks on the carpet. Uh, when he dragged her. No. None. Well, well, then he carried her. He's a big man. What are you standing here for? That's evidence. Go find him. <laughs> there are no post-mortem wounds. All the mutilations were done when the victims were alive. I know Cynthia was concerned that her mother had been dragged or forcibly moved to a room downstairs in some way. Well, there's no physical evidence to support that. I'll let her know that. Okay, this killer. He's as gentle as he is vicious. I mean, he tortures his victims when they're tied up, but then he's very careful not to injure them in any way before that. What about the knife? Well, you see, that's very interesting, too, because the apparent weapon used is only superficially similar to the one that was used in the earlier homicides. Yeah, it's probably a Bowie knife, 12 to 15 inches long, double-bladed along the length of the curve, but the distinctive serrations, they're missing here. So, what are you saying, Doctor? We got a second killer? I'm saying it opens up a whole world of possibilities, and if you want my opinion, I think this killer has more than one knife. Well, we gotta go. Valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You are with me. The rod and your staff, they comfort me. Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Uh 
Well, Farrell, the police department certainly lost one of its beloved. There's no one listening here but the two of us. Let's cut the crap, huh? The police department lost its severest critic. Time being, that is. Wait till his daughter starts raising a stink about the way the department handled these killings. Well, that's what I was hoping you and your city council connections could help me with, Harry. It's better to have him inside the tent. Whatever you can, huh? Don't worry about it. Frankly, he hadn't been on the police force for, what, eight, ten years? But I know it's where his heart was. I think he would have wanted a police funeral. You have our deepest Thank sympathy. You. Condolences. Come on. Cynthia, he was a force on the council. I can't begin to tell you how much he's going to be missed. It's very kind of you, Mr. Collingwood. Harry, please. I know this isn't the time or the place, but I've spoken with the mayor, and you and I have to talk. In the meantime, if there's anything you need. Thank you. of us were talking, Sarge. I noticed. Well, we kind of decided that uh, if this is the way you want to go, well, then we'd be willing to work on it off duty. Oh, I'm not the Lieutenant Rodriguez. You'll need to ask him. All right, need to see all of you. Conference room now. Uh, Lieutenant, not now, Rodriguez. All right, we got four viable suspects. Calhoun, we may think that he sleeps in the park, but the public defender claims that he has a lawful residence. Find out where it is and see if there's anybody there that can tell you anything about him. Robbins, ditto. I want him watched. At some point, we might want to get court orders for the medical records. Doyle, I want to know where he goes. And I want to know why everybody dislikes this guy so much, huh? I also want the trucking routes especially during the times of the killings. Was he anywhere near the victims? That's the question. Doyle's mother. And Martin, you said that she was a pretty powerful woman. Huh? Do you think that she could uh, subdue a middle-aged or elderly couple? It's possible. She ripped open a bag of potato chips with just two fingers. I saw it with my own eyes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Four suspects, round the clock on all of them. Now. Obviously, this is going to require a considerable amount of overtime. I'll approve all overtime pay as needed. Yep. Excuse me, Lieutenant. Detective Rodriguez might have something to say about that, Jorge. Uh, no. No, it's nothing. <clears throat> We're fine. Appreciate it if you do what you have to do and get out of here. I don't want Doyle coming back and finding a cop going through the records. And we appreciate your cooperation, Mr. Daly, so. Thank you. Spare some change for, for God's work. Thank you, ma'am. The blessings of the Lord are on you and on your children. Excuse me, ma'am. Could you spare some change for God's work? Jesus personally asked us to feed the hungry. Thank you very much. You're a good Christian. He seems to do pretty well for himself. He's making more than we're making. That's for damn sure. That's a joke, I guess. I don't know. When we do this, the dumber it seems. He's a 
deeply religious young man, I'll say that for him. Suppose you can't tell me what kind of trouble he's in? Well, he's not actually in trouble, Father, but we found it necessary to check him out. I'm sure you have good reasons for asking. I'd like to ask you something, Father, that you might find difficult to answer, but is either one of them dangerous? That's not a very pastoral question now, is it? Thank you, sister. That sort of speculation is not very becoming, Sergeant. The kind of things a person might do. Well, uh, let me put it in a different way, then. How would a man know if his beliefs were erroneous? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know you were with anyone. No, no, that's all right, all right. Perhaps you'd like to ask him some questions yourself. Not at this time. I'd rather he didn't say anything. Of course. Your mother was just here, Elroy. Elroy Doyle. Sergeant Malcolm Ainsley. Pleasure. Thanks for your time, Father. Perhaps we'll speak again. Sergeant. You're with the police department? Yes. I don't think we should trust the police. Well, I don't think blind trust in any institution is probably a good idea. <laughs> you think you know something about justice? Justice is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. None call us for justice, nor pleadeth the truth. They trust in vanity and they speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Nice meeting you, Elroy. Later, Father. From the book of Isaiah, I believe. Look it up.
Patrick, you're down in Margate. Yeah, since this coat is this guy's ass, and my wife and I decided it'd be better if you left town. It's hard to argue with that logic. All right, we've got Tara on our cell phone. Listen, I can hardly sleep at night thinking about this man. Tara, take a sleeping pill. Don't give in to this monster. for Jerry's take on this way can we? We are witnessing the punishment the Lord has devised to warn us. Thanks for the call, Jerry. Look, Casey, my good friend, the cop, they don't know who's what. Well, yes, it's common knowledge. The police are at their wits. All right. Well, I mean, what's the point? We feel helpful. I'm scared to death. I'm afraid to have my kids go to school. I just don't think it's an efficient use of manpower, that's all. Oh, as opposed to what? That's not how it works, and you know it. Look, if we had anything else, I'd agree with you in a minute. All these people carry knives. They're prone to violence or religious zealotry. How come you're starting to sound like a priest, not a detective? Tell you what, you want to excommunicate them? Go right ahead. But round-the-clock surveillance on people who have no known connection to these victims? No. No. So what's the going price on a human life nowadays, Lieutenant? You gave me a pimp. Only he's not the guy and he's dead. We got a nutcase with cancer who apparently is also going to be dead before very long. You don't think that could push an unstable guy over the edge? We got a truck driver whose mother recites the Bible. And specifically the book of Revelation. Oh, and a guy who thinks he's Jesus. Only if I remember my Bible correctly, Jesus never killed anybody. And I don't remember him pulling a knife on an undercover detective either. It was the wrong knife, Malcolm. But you think I don't know what's going on around here? I don't know what's going on here, Leo. Maybe you can tell me. I worked my way up the hard way, Malcolm. I worked eight years on foot and in a police car before I ever became a detective. And you know what? I didn't have any connections. Oh, come on, Leo. This isn't like you. That's ancient history. All right. Present tense. I am a detective. I did work my way up to become commander of this division. And it wasn't a fast climb. But I did think that maybe one day I might be able to retire from here. You won't be retiring anytime soon. Yeah, well, I didn't think so either. But they're starting to sharpen their knives for me. Sure, there's a lot of heat on this one, but it's not the first time there's been a heat, and I don't remember you ever having any problem handling it. You know, when Max Turns was alive, the chief always told me to watch my back. He had a daughter in homicide. She was rising fast and looking to take over my job. Yeah, she's already told the mayor's office that if homicide was functioning on all cylinders, her family would still be alive. Oh, come on, Leo. If everything you tell me is true, then you're screwed three ways anyhow. If the surveillances work, I'm the genius who came up with the idea. If they don't, you're the fool who gave the authority. And if I say no, then I lack the imagination to see past conventional methods in an unconventional case. What's your point, Malcolm? I don't know, Leo. But I do know that the commander that I have worked for and known the last five years, he never give in to that kind of logic.
Yeah, so I didn't get a response right away. You know, I mean, it's just really terrible. Mm -hmm. All of these things I don't want to put pressure on you, Cynthia. If you need time to think it over, you take as much time. I don't. That's a yes or that's a no? Wayne, that piece of legislation was supposed to be on my desk this morning. It's not there. You sure you have time to eat? <laughs> I'm sorry. You were saying? I was saying that I don't need time to think it over. I know it's what my father would have wanted, Mr. Collingwood. But my answer is yes. I'm glad to hear it. Mayor will be too, and if I may say so, you're going to make a very pretty and welcome addition to the city council. Now, uh, <clears throat> let me lay some cards on the table. There's been considerable discussion about this. Your father's committee assignment, police oversight. How would you feel about that? Don't you think it's a little presumptuous? Well, frankly, that was the concern. But on the other hand, let's look at it realistically. The police department's taken some big hits lately. There's no one in city government with a greater stake than you in restoring confidence. We have a very good police department, Mr. Collingwood. And loyalty is a very commendable quality, Cynthia. But if you're like your father, and I think you are, you'll put your loyalty aside and call him the way you see him. I'll certainly try. Good. You can start now. The Homicide Bureau. If they had caught the killer last week, my parents would still be alive. If you'll excuse me for a moment, I'm gonna take care of this. <laughs> Carol, what's the mayor's schedule look like over the next couple of days for a press conference? Can we do that? All right. doing here? Something matter? Everything's fine. Why don't you call? I did, but they said you'd left already. You got my cell phone number. You would have told me not to come. Come on in. Sure it's okay? I had to ask. Oh my god, Malcolm. This looks just like when you were I I know. When I was a struggling priest, now I'm a struggling cop. You still haven't said why you're here, Karen. Would you like a drink first? I'm fine. Something to eat? I don't think I want to risk it. This looks comfy enough. Not bad. <clears throat> Karen, why are you here? Remember that last time at Dr. Evelyn's? It occurred to me that I've been letting you down all these years. That's not true, Karen. It's not true at all. Let's go further back. When I told you I didn't want to hear these things, that I didn't want you to bring these things home, well, I heard what happened on the radio, so they came home anyway. Karen, you don't have to apologize for anything. Too bad Hallmark doesn't make one of those condolences on your husband's, girlfriend's, parents' murders. You actually shop for one? Of course. I check three stores. Uh, Cynthia, you haven't met Karen yet. Miss Ernst, I'm so sorry to hear about your parents. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. That's why I'm really here. I wanted to tell Malcolm, and, and I'm glad I got a chance to tell you, but I have to be going. No, please, not on my account. I, I shouldn't have... On the contrary. Besides, I have a sitter waiting. Malcolm. Karen. It was very nice meeting you, Mrs. Hensley. You're even more beautiful than I was afraid you'd be. Oh, yo, my man. You seen Calhoun? No, 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 Calhoun. Yeah, you do, man. He's always around here. He's got long hair. He's got that beard. He's always all... Oh. Jesus. Little Jesus. Yeah, little Jesus, little Jesus. You seen him? You see him? I don't see him. 
I don't see him. That's why I asked you if you saw him. If he was here, you'd see him. Now get the hell out of my face, man. There. Nice talking to you. You probably know he hated being called James or Calhoun. Some of the men here had a little problem calling him Jesus. In Spanish, I guess it wouldn't bother them, but in English, it didn't sit right. So you had some trouble with that, Ryan? We have our share on angry people here. Some would say more than our share. You ever pull a knife on anybody? No weapons are permitted in dormitory. But you don't search the men, do you? No, we give them their privacy. This is his bed, but as I told you, he hasn't been here for a few days. This is longer? Yes, it is. Mind if I check out what's inside? I mind very much. These men have lost their homes, they haven't lost their rights. So if he's not here, you don't hold his bed, do you? If he's not here and we need the bed, we'll assign it to someone else. We issue the locks and we know the combinations. We would take his things out, put them in storage. But even then, we still need the court order. Okay. Well, thanks for your help. isn't necessary. We could have put things back when they were finished. Everything where it's supposed to be. Blood on my hands, Malcolm. It's all over everything. Do I remind you of? You're not Lady Macbeth, Cynthia. I know what you're thinking. That if we had caught him in time, I wouldn't have my father's blood on my hands. Gonna offer me his job? You know that? On the city council? It's just like daddy, isn't it? Even after his death, he's looking at his little girl's career. Nothing in his life became him like the leaving of it. He didn't have anyone really but me. Well, me and Theo. I think he left Theo a great deal of money. That's something you should look into. We'll look into everything. Was it the same knife? No. Well, then that's something, too. Maybe he had to buy another knife. Hunting shops and places like that. We're gonna do all that. It's a common misconception that the lawyer-client privilege ends with the client's death. Uh, I'm, I'm aware of the privilege, Mr. Ziegler, but Miss Ernst is the executor, and she specifically and explicitly waived that. I don't see how your late client's interests are best served by obstructing the investigation into his murder. All right, what do you want to know? The terms of the will. Well, you know, actually, it's a, it's a very simple instrument. Uh, there are some sizable charitable donations, and, uh, well, almost $100,000 uh, to um, Theo Palacio. There were, of course, the children. Children? Max and Eleanor uh, Ernst had a son eight years before they had Cynthia, John, and a troubled boy. You know what happened to him? Well, I, I don't know the whole story, but there was some trouble with the law, and after that, the son left town. You know where he is now? 
No, no, Max never wanted to have anything to do with him after that. How does he figure in the will? Well, he doesn't. Well, I mean, he's mentioned in it, of course, but that was my suggestion. You see, as a legitimate child, he could have asserted a claim if he hadn't been mentioned in the will at all. Max leaves him $100. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for having me so fast. I didn't know when I was going to get a chance to call you. Yeah, that's right. You're a city councilwoman now. Yeah, in an hour and a half. Congratulations. <laughs> well, Cynthia, um, you never told me you have a brother. Why would I tell you about my brother? Well, I don't know. You, you, your father left him out of the will. You know where he is? I don't know. He left home when he was 18. I was 10. I haven't heard from him. Did you ever try to find him? Yes, I, I tried to find him when I first joined the force. My father found out about it, and he put a stop to it. I can't talk about this now, Malcolm. I have to be at City Hall. Yeah, but um, did your father ever try to find him? It's too painful, Malcolm. I'll see you later. Earlier, I want you to gather as many samples as you can from the surrounding area. I want to make sure that all this blood is his. this confirmed? Cal? I don't think there's going to be any resurrections for this Jesus. <laughs> Why don't we take it easy on the blasphemy call? Just tell me what I should know. His throat was slashed. There was a knife sheath on his belt, but no knife. Steve, could I get a picture over here? If I keep this, they cost money, you know. Help yourself. Okay. He dead? Yeah, he's dead. Crazy goat. All the money in the world ain't gonna help him out now. Money? He'd been flashing a bundle. You say where he got it? Guys like Calhoun, don't kiss and tell. Flange A is supposed to make the abut with tab C. It is abutted. Give me another one of those thingies. The manual doesn't say anything about thingies. It means these, Mom. See? He understands me. Mary, these are fine. You can run them through. Um, you got my message about the press conference, didn't you? Yeah, I'm gonna head over there soon. Do you want me to go over there with you? No, no, I'm fine. Have a good evening. What's up, 
top. How long did your father work for Councilman Ernst? I'm not sure I could say in years, since I was a small child. Was your father aware that he was included in the Councilman's will? If you're suggesting... I have to ask these questions. You just want to know if my father had a reason for wanting his employer dead. It's perfectly obvious what you're getting at. My father is not a wealthy man. My husband isn't a wealthy man either. Maybe you ought to check my husband, too. I appreciate your taking the time. The night they were killed, we were all at my son's school. It was science night. You can check with his teachers if you'd like. Lab results show. All the blood on the scene was Calhoun's. So, if the guy was in a knife fight with anyone, I'd say he didn't score any points. Now, you see the blood here on the blade? That's his as well. Now, the gash in his throat, which was the only significant evidence of trauma found, was made from left to right, and it appears that it was made from behind, judging from the way the wound extends and deepens towards the dorsal aspect on the right side. So what does that tell you? Well, you know, it's consistent with what I said before, no knife fight. Now, I'd hypothesize that someone jumped him from behind Grab Calhoun's own knife out of his sheath and, you know, let him have it. That makes sense. There was cash taken at each of the homicides, right? Yeah, but he didn't have any money on him. That's what I'm saying. Could have been a robbery. There was a guy at the shelter that had the bed next to Calhoun. He thought he had money. In fact, when he heard Calhoun was dead, he said, uh, all the money in the world's not going to do him any good. But I'm thinking if this guy knew he had cash, that probably means the late Mr. Calhoun wasn't too careful about who found out. Now, the big question. Is that knife the murder weapon we're looking for? There was one knife used in the last three pairs of homicides. Very distinctive in the nature of the wounds that it inflicted. Now that is not this knife. Another weapon was used in the last two killings. Councilman and Mrs. Ernst. Now that knife... It's not as exotic in its configuration as the one used in the earlier killings, but it is distinctive enough to allow an identification. Now, I'm willing to testify with a very high degree of certainty that this is that knife. You're absolutely sure of that. Malcolm, you sound like a defense attorney. You're not certain. If there was a trial, which obviously there isn't going to be, and if the defendant had a really good attorney, I would say that that attorney could raise a reasonable doubt. But in my own professional opinion, and based on some of the evidence that I found, I believe that to be the knife that killed Max and Eleanor Ernst and Calhoun. And Malcolm, I just don't testify to things I'm not sure about. Look, if Dr. Sanchez's testimony is good enough for me, it damn well ought to be good enough for you. All right, then. Why did he change knives? Well, the, the fact is he did, all right? And I want to know why. If he didn't want to get caught with it. So he threw it away? Sandra said it was a very distinctive knife, not cheap. No, not cheap. So why would he throw away an expensive knife? Maybe it broke. Maybe, uh, maybe he had a change of heart. He didn't want to kill anymore, so he got rid of it. And then the impulse comes over him again. <laughs> <laughs> I know this killer. I know the book of Revelation. He's steeped in it. He's steeped in the twisted version of judgment that many people have of it. I saw a pale horse, and he who sat on it was named Death and the grave followed with him. And he was given authority over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death. This man does not repent. This man does not have a change of heart. This man knows he will kill again. You know, you ought to be glad that Calhoun is dead, Malcolm. The man was on your list. That means you won. Now let's just move on. We got our killer. It's take long, is it? I gotta get to this press conference. Yeah, just, just a minute. Okay. Go. 
I didn't want to get in the middle of all that stuff earlier, but I, I had to tell someone. I'm listening. It's Calhoun. The way he was killed. What are you talking about? Dr. Sanchez's autopsy stuff. Left to right from the back, I, I guess that's okay. I mean, I'm no medical examiner. All right. Is there something that's not okay? You got to picture the place where Calhoun's body was found. This, this, this old shack. I mean, it, it's falling apart. Rotten boards, big holes on the wall. I found some hairs. Hairs? Calhoun's? But, but on the inside of a hole, somebody else's. So, someone jumped him. They cut his throat. And then they slammed him against the shack. It's not consistent with the blood spatter. If he was cut away from the shack, there'd been blood there. There wasn't. All the blood was pulled around him at the wall of the shack. Calhoun was there to meet someone. Somebody knew that he was going to be there. And they hid in and around the shack. And then they killed him. That's what you're saying. The other hairs inside had to belong to someone. It's, it's all in my report. It's good work, pal. It's real good work. Thanks. Okay, okay, let's, uh, let's settle down, everybody, please. Listen, I want to apologize to all of you for uh, having you come down here so late for this announcement. If I seem like I'm in a, in a very good mood, that's because I am. The uh, serial killer who has terrorized this city, the man responsible most recently for the deaths of Councilman Max Ernst and his beloved wife, Eleanor, and before that, for the six terrible and savage homicides is dead. Apparently murdered in Northland Park. His body was found this afternoon by a passing civilian and the weapon he used in his rampage of death was found nearby. We owe the solution to these murders to the diligent and professional work of our homicide division led by Lieutenant Leo Newbold. <laughs> Those detectives already narrowed their investigation to a very short list of suspects. I'll let the lieutenant explain all of that to you and answer all your questions. But before I do, I want to thank him and the men and women under his command on behalf of a grateful and relieved city. Thank you. Hey, Sergeant. Hold on a second. Take a look at this. Calhoun. I'll take a look, you'll see. You know that thing we were talking about before, the, uh, the overtime stuff? Yeah. Offer still stands. Now, does that go for all of you? All of us. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Driving around town. Yeah. How long do you think we're gonna be doing this? Uh, I don't know. You know, as long as you feel like doing it. It's voluntary, bro. I was making you do anything. You know how long I'm gonna be doing it? Until the sergeant says we don't have to anymore. Wanna know why? Because he doesn't think this case is closed yet. He's the best damn detective I've ever worked with, so I figure, you know, might as well. Just walk in here. You have some business? Uh, I uh, think he's here to see me, Marty. Uh, is that right, Elroy? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Come on in.
can I do for you? I know all about you, Sergeant. What do you know? Father Ainsley. That's right, isn't it? No. You were a priest. Was a priest. Not now. Why not? Is that any of your business? I'm a truck driver. Is that any of yours? You know, that thing that you said the other day, it's, uh, it's from Isaiah. I, I looked it up right here. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. H how come you're saying things like that if you're not a priest anymore? I just wanted to say what you would do. Well, that didn't get you anywhere, did it? <laughs> I didn't do anything. Yes, you did. You did two things. You looked it up, and you came here. I'm not some toy you can play with, Father. Sergeant. Father. You can't change what you are. We're not here to talk about me. What are you, Elroy? Why do you have people following me? What, you, you, you think I don't know about that? What are you, Elroy? I am what I am, okay? Now make them stop! Well, they'll stop when they stop. <laughs> hey, you pick on me just because I make a mistake once? What do you mean you made a mistake? They're, I, they're supposed to be sealed, you know? The, that's the law, it's your law, so you better follow it! My law's different, Sergeant. Watch out. Marty. Doyle's got a juvenile record. Do me a favor, uh, find out the jurisdiction and when. I'll get a court order on sealing it. You got it. Thanks. Sergeant Ainsley is here, uh, Miss Cynthia. Uh, will you be wanting anything? No. Thank you. I'm so glad to see you, Malcolm. Uh, I know it's late. I don't know if you'd be up. Not a problem. Actually, I'm not living here yet. There's still so much to do. I haven't had a chance to thank you for catching that man. Really catch him, you know. No, I suppose you didn't. But it's better this way, though. There would have been a trial, 12 years of appeals. This way it's over. Closure? I hate that word. What kind of consolations did you use to offer your parishioners? Consolations? Absolution. Is that the same thing? I don't know. I don't know what I believe in now. Even that killer has beliefs. to believe in love and forgiveness. Not some god who told you to kill people. Well, that's the point, isn't it? We feel we have this calm in it. It's just us talking to ourselves. Is that what happened to you? More or less. I began to wonder if I wasn't living this life because of some need inside me to fulfill that kind of loneliness and if that was true it wasn't really a vocation was it it could have been then i met karen and you fell in love with her and uh, i thought if god wants me to walk away from this i will i thought what kind of calling is this if it's just me talking to myself and if I didn't know the answer, how could I be a priest and pretend that I did? You're going back to her, aren't you? I don't know. I want 
to try, but I can't if... Please. And please don't tell me you're sorry. God, I hate you. You better go. Please. But don't worry about me, Malcolm. I'll be fine. I'll just run for mayor in a few years, just like Daddy was going to do. Malcolm! Do you talk to her about the things that we just talked about? I used to. But it was a long time ago. found something. Yeah, and that's just for starters. You know the Frost, the couple in the hotel? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, I didn't find anything that placed Doyle near the hotel, but they cash some traveler's checks, remember? And that was right here, which is right next door to Daily Floor and Tile, where Doyle made a delivery that very afternoon. Why are we discussing Elroy Doyle? And why did you find it necessary to call me before 6 o'clock in the morning? You know what? I'm going to go and do some more work on this, and then I'll call. Yeah, I'd, I'd like you two to stay and give your input. Okay, great. Okay. This better be good, Malcolm. I'm not a morning person. Yesterday, Elroy Doyle rolls in here ranting and raving, and he feels like we're persecuting him for an old juvenile case. Yeah. A record that we can't find anywhere in our files. Okay, and I still want to understand why we're investigating Elroy Doyle. Have you read Julio Verona's report? Yes, I have. Well, I assume you know that there were other hairs at the crime scene other than Calhoun's. That shack was used by hundreds of homeless people for shelter. Now, those hairs could belong to any one of them. Now, someone waiting for Calhoun, that is pure speculation on Verona's part. But here's the thing I really need to understand. What does any of this have to do with Elroy Doyle? And his lack of juvenile record thereof. I don't know. Um, but what if somebody was waiting for Calhoun? It's a mystery. And I don't like mysteries. Okay, how about this? What if um, Doyle probably was a juvie in the mid-80s, right? Right. Maybe you have a cold case in your medical examiner files. That's a ton of paper trails. So we're going to have to do it the old way. And it's not going to be easy. But then what has been easy about this case? He seems to think that we know about this record so i think we should find out about it and you know what that means yep back to the files the files here we go help yourself carl oh, give me a break oh. yep that's it that's all he took he's a slow reader darling help you with those, Ruby. Oh, now that is so sweet, Marty. No problem. You guys. <laughs> hey, it's me. Listen to this. 1986, unsolved homicide of an elderly couple. They both had their throats cut. Yeah. Now, evidence file is missing, but I have a name. 
lead detective on the case. you, Toby McClellan? That would be me. Malcolm Ainsley, homicide. Oh, my old stomping grounds. Yeah. I was wondering if you could uh, tell me about one of your old cases you carried. And this conversation would be of a confidential nature? It would. I keep some of my old case files in the garage. I have to blow the dust off it. <laughs> Liberty killers. I'm not gonna find it this way. So tell me again. It was a double homicide. A couple was in their own home. Uh, juvenile suspect. Yeah, yeah. Big ox of a kid. That's him. That was some kind of cult angle, right? Uh, detective, your memory's a lot better than you think. I think I put it onto 87 because we kept it open. This is the one. A Japanese couple, he cut them up real bad. A kid lived a block, block and a half away, and a neighbor saw him hanging around, if I remember right, huh? That's what it was. We even had the damn knife. But no prints, though. There was a church on the corner, cemetery in the back, hadn't been used in a hundred years, and that's where it was. All covered with blood, just lying there in the grass. But no prints. You keep saying that. Hell no, we had prints. There was a print set in the blood. What happened? We had the prints on the knife. We didn't have his prints. And you cannot fingerprint the juvie without his mommy's permission. Uh, it's the dumbest damn law I ever heard of in my life. Yeah. You mind if I take this? Why not? Police department property anyway. It would have made a great story if we ever solved it. Really appreciate your help, Detective. Thanks so much. All part of the job. Is that with uh, B? Bottom line? Bottom line. Hmm. You're not there yet. What do you mean, not there yet? The trucking company records put him at or near virtually every one of the homicides. Near, not at. I need at. What I mean by not there is that if you arrested him, I wouldn't be able to get an indictment, let alone a conviction. What about that stuff? There's no statute of limitations. They couldn't fingerprint him then. We can fingerprint him now. There's a page from the Book of Revelation inside the envelope in there. That ties it into the homicides. If I could have one wish, it would be that detectives learn something about the rules of evidence. Oh, God, spare me. First off, getting his prints. I'm not sure you could for a crime he committed as a juvenile. I'd have to check and see what the case law says on that. But, say you get his prints. What do you do with them? Compare them to the prints of the knife, of course. But where's the knife? It's not in the property office. So what do we present at a trial, gentlemen? We've got a 17-year-old double homicide in which all our evidence is inadmissible. And four current double homicides, about which the police chief and you, Lieutenant, have publicly announced that the perpetrator is somebody else. Well, there's got to be something that we can do. Well, I'd certainly keep an eye on Doyle. You parked this truck out front and just went in the house? Yeah. You ever done that before? No. Usually leaves his truck at the depot and takes the bus back and forth from work. I tell you, it always packed real squirrely lately. Maybe we're catching a break. Lights have been off for a while. Maybe he's sleeping. Have you seen the mother? No. Marty, why don't you 
drive around the block, cover the back. Position. It's all quiet in the back. Good night, Ivan. Good night, Grampy. Who is it? It's Elroy. I can hear my hair grow. Sarge, all this waiting is killing me. Rodriguez, we're on a stakeout. It's police work, it's what we do. Still. Rose, who's at the door? Say it again. Drop it now. And they worship the dragon who gave him authority. Right there! Now! And they worship the beast! Saying who is like the beast? Who is able to fight with him? Drop it now! Oh. Let me get some help back here! Elroy, I'm not a priest. Hear my confession, Father. I'm a police officer, Elroy. And anything you tell me can and will be used in a court of law. My lawyer. He didn't even want me to talk to you. Well, you have that right. And then he said he wanted to come. Okay, I can send for him. You don't have to say anything until he gets here. That isn't right. 
You're not allowed to take anyone with you into this holy confession, Father. I'm not a priest. I'm a police officer. I want to talk to you. If you want to talk to me, you have to understand who I am. Do you understand who I am? Sergeant Malcolm Ainsley, Homicide Division. I want to hear your questions. Why did you kill Sam and Rose Tempone? I'm an instrument of God's will, Sergeant. Father. Why did you use a different knife to kill the Ernst? Sorry I'm late, everybody. All right. Let's do this. The company makes about 300 of these knives a year. So in just five years, that's well over a 1,000 knives. How many of these knives have you personally examined? Several. And can you say with absolute certainty? All right, all right, all right. That's, that's very good. Now, what's your point? With all due respect for Dr. Sanchez's expertise, any halfway decent lawyer is going to be able to cast considerable doubt on the notion that this one knife and only this one knife in all the world could have killed the Frosts, the Urbinas, the Hennenfels, let alone Mr. and Mrs. Ernst, where we already know he used a different knife. What if we dropped my parents' case out of the trial? No, no, Cynthia, you don't have to do that. You're as much a victim of this man as anybody. Thank you, Leo. It might help, but not much. What have we got with those first eight homicides? Ten, if you want to count the one from 17 years ago. We've got Sandra's testimony that the knives are similar. Now, what have we got with these last killings? We've got an eyewitness. That little boy actually saw him there. We've got the knife taken out of Elroy Doyle's own hand, covered with their blood, his clothes covered with their blood, and he was apprehended at the scene. It's a slam dunk. Slam dunk. He walks on eight homicides to make your life easier, Knowles? Excuse me, Mr. Knowles, but uh, if it's such a slam dunk, as you say, what would be the harm if you tried him on all the killings? Even if he is acquitted of the others, he'd still be convicted on your slam dunk. My question is, what's the upside? What's the downside? The upside? There is none. He can only be executed once. You are going for capital punishment. Of course, but that's the downside. Execution is a jury decision, and it's very difficult to know how juries think. If we put him on trial for ten homicides and convict him of two, guaranteed someone in that jury room says, hey, this guy's 80% less bad than they tried to tell us he is, and they give him life. Frankly, when they give him those injections, I'll know what he's there for. I'm inclined to agree with Mr. Knowles and Cynthia. Now, let's go out and figure out everything that we're going to need to nail the lid on Doyle. Cynthia? I thanked you once for catching the man who killed my parents. I suppose I ought to thank you again. Ivan, do you see that person in the courtroom today? It was him, Mr. Doyle. Do you know Mr. Doyle? From church. 
How well did you know Mr. Doyle from church? I used to say hi to him because Nana said I had to. Why is that? I said I thought he was kind of creepy, but Nana said you have to be nice to people like that. I have no further... But Grampy says he was a queer duck. <laughs> <laughs> no further questions, Your Honor. No questions, Your Honor. The court thanks you very much, Ivan. You can step down now. The state calls Sergeant Malcolm Ainsley. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Be seated. Please state your name, rank, assignment, and shield number for the record. Sergeant Malcolm Ainsley, Homicide Division, shield number 9387. That's lies! That's lies! That's right. You tell them, Elroy. I know your works and where you dwell. Out the of the front of Satan is! Prophet! Yes, where the throne of Satan is! Prince of Satan, I know what you are! Oh, Father, I ascend exceedingly! The defendant will be seated. Has the jury reached the verdict? Yes, we have, Your Honor. Will the defendant please rise? Would you please read your verdict? For the murder of Samuel Timponi, guilty. Murder in the first degree, capital murder. For the murder of Rosalie Tamponi, guilty. Murder in the first degree, capital murder. Yeah. Alright, I'll see you there. I'm off the phone. Okay, I love you too. All right. Bye. You twisted. Twisted. Hey, Sarge, that's your phone. I'm not here. Rodriguez. No. No! Sergeant Ainsley's line. Yeah, he's here. He just caught him. Hold on. You're dead, Jorge. It's for you. Don't make him wait. We said it was going to be easy, Sergeant. Ainsley here. This is Father Oaksbridge at Laidlaw State Penitentiary. I assume you know the execution is scheduled for 7 o'clock tomorrow morning? Uh, yes, I'm aware of it. He wants to see you. He's a Father Oaksbridge. Father, I'm Sergeant Ainsley. Mr. Doyle wanted to talk to me. Yes. Do you still wish to speak to him, Alroy? Father, they're gonna kill me. I've just got a few minutes, please. They're gonna kill me. May God have mercy on your soul. to Almighty God, to Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, to Blessed Michael, the Archangel, to Blessed John the Baptist, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, deed. Please, Father, hear my confession. Okay. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you unto everlasting life. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and absolution and remission for our sins. Father, I withheld the truth from you. You came to me when I was bound in prison for doing the Lord's bidding, and I withheld the truth. Did you kill Yuki and Susanna, Ikea? 
The Lord judged them, Father. I was an instrument of his judgment. Did you kill them? Yes. And Daniel and Ron Frost? Yes. And Alberta and Lucille Urbina? Yes. And Stephen and Elizabeth Hennefield? It's time. Stephen and Elizabeth Hennefield? Yes. Max and Eleanor Ernst. <laughs> Did you kill Max and Eleanor Ernst? <laughs> Say it, Elroy. <laughs> I didn't use any different knife, Sergeant Father. That wasn't me. <laughs> that wasn't me. Line check. Is he here, Warden? He's here. suffered. They're both dead. Then why was Calhoun murdered? None of it matters anymore, does it, Malcolm? This is such a crazy place. I mean, it could be you're in luck. Could be. Either it's there or it isn't. Well, yeah, it would seem that way, but nothing's ever that simple. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, here it is. you once for catching the man who killed my parents. I suppose I could thank you again. Elroy, did you kill Max and Eleanor Ernst? I didn't use any different knife, Sergeant Father. That wasn't me. James is dead! 
Okay, I mean, just for the sake of argument, let's say that you're right. I still don't see your point. Point? Doyle didn't kill him. Oh, come on, Malcolm. <laughs> what, you're telling me that you're suddenly interested in clearing the good name of Elroy Doyle? Let me remind you, there was no miscarriage of justice, all right? The man was executed for killing two people that he did kill. I'm aware of that. And we can't bring James Calhoun to justice because the man is dead. Leo, it still doesn't explain where the money came from. Well, if he killed the Ernst, he took the money. Max Ernst carrying $1,000 in his pockets, all in $100 bills? Look, I know where you're going with this, Malcolm. Now, don't go there, all right? You know I have to. You know, I wonder where our careers are going to be if you're wrong on this. You're going to need a court order. And we can't go through the usual channels or this thing will blow up in our faces. Yeah, Lieutenant Nubo, let me speak to the chief. Well, I can't wait to hear what is so urgent, Leo. Why we're having a meeting here in the parking lot. I had to cancel two meetings, do you know that? Good to see you again, Sergeant. Chief, so this is about reopening the murders of Councilman and Mrs. Ernst. What? Thomas, give us a minute, will you? What the hell are you talking about? Sir, we have evidence suggesting that Elroy Doyle was not responsible for the murders of Councilman Ernst and his wife. No, we didn't want to proceed with an investigation of this sensitivity without, of course, clearing everything through you. Councilwoman Ernst's office. Hold, please. It's Chief Ketledge's office. It's urgent. <clears throat> Hello? Lieutenant Newbold and the Chief are discussing reopening your parents' murder. Really? I just thought you ought to know. Well, I appreciate you letting me know. Thank you, Thomas. Bye-bye. I have to go out for a while. Don't forget about your 3 o'clock. OK. OK, but put this thing to bed. Once and for all. Sergeant. <clears throat> Big printout you wanted. It's all there. Dates, amounts of transactions. Looks like you're right. Guess we're gonna have to make a trip to the homeless shelter. Yeah. Why don't you let me go? Positive. Oh, yeah, definitely. You don't forget someone like that coming to a place like this. I didn't know she was a cop. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Homicide, Sergeant Ainsley. Hey, Sarge. It's me. Yeah, I just got a positive ID from the homeless shelter. Okay. You're closer to City Hall than I am. I'll meet you there. All right, I'm on the way. So you don't know where she is? She had a 3 o'clock with Harry Collingwood. But he just called. She's not there. What time did she leave? 1, 1.30. And she didn't say where she was going? Mm -mm. OK. Well, if she does show up, I'd really appreciate it if you didn't mention that I was here. Is anything wrong? No. We were just thinking of um, throwing her a surprise party. Thanks. You might want to try Chief Ketledge's office. I'm sorry. She got a call just before she went out. You sure it was the chief's office? I answered. It was the chief's aide. Ms. Ernst took the call on my phone. Thanks. You're welcome. The car's not parking. She knows. Chief Sade snitched us out. Did you want to put a warrant? No, no. Um, I just want to give her a chance to end this thing the right way. Maybe she's at home. Let's go check it out. 
Malcolm Ainsley. What? Well, what do you mean? Yeah, but didn't my wife... Okay, okay, I I'm sending a placement over right now. Or hey, go get another car from Motor Pool. You know where Jason's school is? Pick him up. You're so transparent. I can see what you're thinking. You think I don't deserve to have him. That's what you were gonna say, isn't it? Deserving has got nothing to do with this. I think it does. You ought to talk to your husband about that. When he was a priest, it was all about God's will. Now it's about justice. What a beautiful world you two live in. You two deserve each other. If you don't care about justice, why did you join the police department? You don't know? Your husband didn't tell you about my controlling father and your little therapy sessions? No, never. I had a brother, John. He was supposed to follow in my father's footsteps. He got into trouble in college. My father could have bailed him out, but he didn't. He never saw nor spoke to my brother again. That's when my daddy decided that since John couldn't fulfill his dream, I would. I was 10 years old. My whole life was decided for me. That's why you killed him? And my mother? She stood beside him every step of the way. Don't worry. I can wait. For what? For Malcolm. Elroy Doyle had the right idea. All the couples, together. Malcolm's at work. He won't be home for hours. The school is going to call him because you didn't pick up your son. Malcolm knows I'm here. I'm sure he figured it out when he got the call. Both doors covered. Malcolm, can you see me? I can see you. Are you as good a shot as I am? Remember one shot right between the eyes? I remember. Of course, I didn't have as much to lose. That hostage wasn't my wife. Detective Ainsley. Join us. Put the gun in the sink. Now! Step away. So, you figured it all out, didn't you? It wasn't hard. The exact amount of cash I found in Calhoun's possessions was withdrawn from your bank account a couple of days before your parents were killed. The man at the homeless shelter made a positive ID on you. You paid Calhoun to kill your parents? And you had to kill him. Tell her what you told me. What are you talking about? Tell her how you lost your faith. All those secrets you told me, but you couldn't tell your wife. All those doubts about yourself. You're doing just fine. Why don't you tell her? Tell her how you confided in me. How you trusted me. Tell her how you loved me. I know you did, Malcolm. I know you did. No one's ever loved me like that. Maybe I'll tell her how your father said we should end it, and you did nothing. You know how much I hated him, how long I hated him. But you still had to do everything he told you. When he said, stop seeing Sergeant Ainsley, you did. I didn't end it, Malcolm. You did. You couldn't defy him over me any more than you could defy him over your brother. You stopped looking for your brother because he told you to. Stop it. Maybe. 
Maybe you could have helped him. It wouldn't have been that hard to find him. I did find him. He died in prison. Someone killed him over nothing. He wouldn't have been there if Daddy'd helped him. Daddy let him die. Oh. An eye for an eye, Malcolm. For us, I couldn't defy my daddy, but I could kill him. It was the only way. Give it some more slack. He's doing good, honey. Poor it. Yeah. Well, you know, the caseload was stacking up on us. Lieutenant wanted to know when you might be back. You're doing good, guys. You know, we talked to your doctor, and, uh, well, the doc gave you a clean bill of health. Come on, Dad. We need you. Okay, all right. Uh, go help Mommy. I'll be right there. Come on. Doctors don't know everything. 